Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 508, Men's Testosterone Stimulation, now that HCG is off the market. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. This is a topic of interest to us because worldwide there is a reported diminishment in testosterone production and fertility in young men. And doctors are being questioned about why is this happening and what can we do about it, especially if a young man wants to maintain his ability to be fertile and eventually have children. So what doctors have done in the recent past is they have provided a drug that's used for other things. It's another one of these, these drugs that they use for off multiple label. reasons, off-label, called HCG. And that helps stimulate a man's production of his own testosterone. Because if you go through the process of replacing a man's testosterone, you shut down the fertility path. You can, uh, when I was younger, before I ever met Dr. Maupin, I had a problem, went to my physician. She said, I'm going to put you on uh, testosterone cyprianate, a shot of testosterone. It will not help with fertility. You cannot have children if you're on this. It won't help you with that. But it will help you as a man maintain your muscle mass and your mood liability, the ability to have regular mood changes and shifts. And she said that's important because you'll, you'll skew off balance if we don't replace your testosterone. So years later, I found Dr. Maupin, and we now use a different style of testosterone replacement. And my situation is not unique. Many men, as they age, have similar experiences. But for young men who are, aren't yet ready to close the door on production of, of children, they have other questions. And so the doctors had found an answer of HCG as a response to the symptomology of low libido. And maybe and we should ED and 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 fatigue and loss of muscle and loss of energy and stamina. Uh -huh. I mean, these guys just sit around as a couch potato. They gain fat. They gain man boobs. They have. They are really truly miserable. So, so there's a list of 14 yes. symptoms of low mm -hmm. testosterone that we'll post and you can see. Uh, many of them, Dr. Moffin's just identified. But all of these symptoms present, and, and men come in, and they're frustrated, they're angry, they're upset, and they're like, why is this happening to me? I don't understand. You know, I'm watching my diet. I'm not drinking too much. I'm not doing drugs. Why is this happening? And the answer is you don't have enough testosterone production. And rarely are they, because they're young, they're rarely tested for that. Right. Because they think, oh, you're 39 years old. You can't possibly have low testosterone. So we'll just tell you that we've checked everything we know of and you we, you don't have anything. So see you later. They don't give them an answer. Yeah. So if you're over 50, then then they start to say, well, well let's check this out. This mm -hmm. could be the reason why. Mm -hmm. You have all these symptoms. They fit in this category. And the, and the thing that you have to learn about doctors, they got multiple categories for everything. And so you get these same 15 or 20 symptoms and they look at this label, then they look at this label and mm -hmm. they see which one most efficiently and effectively fits this category of symptoms. Mm, and then we do other tests to confirm it. Right. So, so that's basically how we think. We think of, have we seen something like this before in this age group that looks the same, that sounds the same, same symptoms, same physical exam? The guys usually look kind of pudgy. They even have the man boobs. Man boobs, exactly. And, and they're, they're kids. They're young. And, and, it, and it's unfortunate because... That keeps them from exercising. It keeps them from dating. It keeps them too, from too much estrogen, not enough testosterone. Right. So. Too much, and when you don't have enough, when you have too little testosterone, you usually have too much estrogen. Yeah. And so those are things that that we look at when we're talking to a man. I also look at his blood work in a young man. I don't even see a young man who has normal testosterone, normal FSH and LH, normal estrogen. If they, you know, if they have symptoms, and I I look at their blood work and they're perfect, or even better than perfect, 
I'm not going to bring those guys in right? because they're going to try to convince me they need more testosterone and they probably have some other problem that has nothing to do with their hormones. So your response to them is you're not yet a candidate for this right. treatment. You're not a candidate. You, you for don't this qualify. Treatment. I'm not going to give it to you. You for need to go. For stimulation or for treatment with, right. with uh, testosterone. So we, but if somebody is young and they have low testosterone, low free testosterone or low total or both, and they have high estrogen and, or they have high estrogen, um, then I will look, I will see them and say, you know, I don't think you're ready for testosterone. That's our last answer. First, we're going to try to see if we can stimulate, if your testicles are still working well, like they should be at that age, we're going to try to push them. So historically, the answer for that stimulation was a drug called HCG. Mm -hmm. But in the last couple months, mm -hmm. the FDA has sent out instructions to physicians saying you can no longer use this drug for this. And we this. won't let the compounding pharmacies, which is who made these drugs because there was no mass producer mass produced yeah. HCG. So they said you can't make them. So not only can we, they didn't say I can't write them. They said you, you you're not going to be able to get them in the right. United States. Right. So they've limited our ability to treat young men. And so that limits the path forward for young men. They give up your fertility, replace your testosterone artificially, but you're not going to be able to have babies. Right. Or turn to another drug than HCG, if you can mm -hmm. find one, that will stimulate your testicles. But none of them is as good or as physiologically compatible. HCG looks just like LH, the, the hormone from your brain that goes to the testicles and stimulates the production of sperm and testosterone. Okay. So it looks alike. So your body thinks... It's LH. So if you're not producing very much LH, it it actually takes the place of the stimulant and then te stimulates the testicles from here to the testicles. So you're, put, you're putting your blood. fingers here because you're, pituitary that's where your pituitary gland, gland is behind your eyes. Yeah, sorry. There. And that's what, <laughs> that's what produces the LH right. and sends the message to your testicles and say, hey, let's have babies. Right. So yeah. it, may, it makes sperm and testosterone. Right. So we give this kind of... Um, a shimmera of, of chimera. Do you say shimmera? Chimera? I say shimmera. You say but, yes. potato, potato. <laughs> so, uh, so we give something that looks just like LH, HCG, and, and it works. And it works really well for young men. Sometimes we can kick them into making their own testosterone without it. We try that usually at first. But in general, if they're low at that age, they need to keep taking this until they're done having children. And then we can replace them with testosterone. But, but physicians can have historically been able to go to a compounding pharmacy and say, I need this much in this dose for this man. And they right. would make some for him. Right. And you can't just either, go to the mass market and find what you need. You can't go to a regular pharmacy and get it. Right. They don't have it in, in a form that, that men can take. They have really high dose forms for stimulating in, um, ovulation in women. They're like a pen and they're really expensive. Yeah. And, but they aren't at the dose that we use with men and they're not able to use them chronically. So we have nothing. So the FDA just unilaterally announced that That's they it. can't make these anymore. They you just, can't order them. They can't make them. You can't get there's them. There's no sense. It's not dangerous. <laughs> it's not abuse. It's well, not we don't know what their drug. reasoning They didn't tell they us. Didn't they didn't explain us. the reasoning. But what the outcome has been, whether it was intended or... or they don't like young men? <laughs> or young yeah, men well, the outcome has been that doctors have said, okay, if we can't use that, what's the next best option? Right. And the next best option is a series of other drugs, which are half again as expensive as HCG would have been. They're so more they're, expensive they're than HCG. Costs a lot more money, and they come with more side effects in order to try to get similar results. And one of those, uh, they're fertility drugs, mm -hmm. uh, Clomid. Is, one. Is, is a female fertility drug. It's also used for men with low sperm counts. Okay. So it is used for men, but it, for a different reason. For, for Similar fertility. dosage? Yeah, similar dosage. So, okay. So, so you can get that from a regular pharmacy. Yes. you can get. So all of these you can get from a regular pharmacy. It's fascinating. just fascinating. So they, yeah. say they, they're not as good. They have side effects that HCG doesn't have. But you can, you can get them through the FDA, kind of, even if it's off-label. So we can... Prescribe Clomid, which comes in only 50 milligrams. We have to give half a pill. And and we do it for 25 days and then off five because this pill is an anti-estrogen and it's stimulating the pituitary, again, to make more LH and FSH. So it's fooling the body into making more of those two hormones, which stimulates the testicles. But side effects of that drug can be, and this is not in all men, this is 
This is in some men get something, some get nothing. Mm -hmm. But some of the side effects are gynecomastia, which is the breast development in men, uh, belly fat, gaining weight, um, lability of their emotions, like right. crying. Right. Because it's an anti-estrogen, but in some tissues it acts as an estrogen. Right. And so it can kind of counteract the activity of testosterone. It and doesn't give me the same outcome in some men as HCG. And it makes them feel and appear more unmasculine, right. less masculine. And that's not what we're going they'll for. cry. They see a puppy in a commercial and they start crying. It's like, what's so damn cute? And right. they normally don't do that. Well, that would be tolerated if you were taking this for six months to get preg to get your wife pregnant. It might This be. is not tolerated yeah. very well or at all if you're doing this chronically all the time just to get your testosterone going. Right. So most men will do this for a short period of time. For a specific reason, they a targeted have, outcome. Or if they have the side effects, yeah. they they come in and they go, I'm done. Just replace my testosterone. I'll forget kids, whatever. I, I'm not doing Well, the other two are, are the side effects that you didn't mention were fatigue and insomnia. Yeah, yeah, staying so, up all night. Yeah, you I can't mean, sleep and you're exhausted. And then you can't How work. are you going to do your job? Right. You know? And then you or can't play make, your sports. Or make, you can't yeah. make babies. You're tired. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> you know, so, too much work. Yeah, it's, yeah. so that's what, but that's not something that happens to everyone. Right. So I, it's worth a try for me to, to give Prescribe somebody it for young this men. Yeah. because at least I'm not canceling out their fertility. I'm, I'm making them more fertile, not less. And I want to see if they have the side effects. Some men have no side effects and it just increases their testosterone. So, so it, it limits your, as a man, it limits your event horizon. If, if you cannot generate functional, successful sperm, then you are left with the option of artificial insemination, which is a complex and expensive process, or the option donor of adopting sperm. with donor yeah, donor sperm. Uh, which also is complex and expensive, mm -hmm. uh, or adoption. Right. So if you want to have children, mm -hmm. if that's important to you, this is a major consideration in your health planning. Right. So, and and I have to back up and say some men that we put testosterone put on testosterone can then come off of it and then make babies. It's if just, they're young enough. If they're young enough. Yeah. But not all men. Yeah. And I and it's a, it's it's rolling the dice. It's, I can't guarantee them that when I give them testosterone and shut their own production down, that they're going to be able to come back from that. Yeah. The preponderance of the statistics are weighted such that if you replace your testosterone, you won't generate your own testosterone again. Right. It'll all come artificially from the outside help. You'll always have to take testosterone. Yeah. That's that usually is more common in shots than pellets, but pellets take a long time to recover from because they last six months, and then they right. take another six months for you to get sperm and your own testosterone back when you stop taking it. Right. So, so that's so that's one option. Doesn't sound that great, but it's our first. It's it's one of our first options. The other options, Arimidex mm -hmm. or Anastrozole, the same same drug, and it's usually used to treat breast cancer in women. It's also used to treat women for infertility and it's used to treat men when they have gynecomastia or, or the man breasts uh, and i use it along with testosterone to get rid of estrogen that decreases the dose of testosterone i have to use because right. it makes the the testosterone the free testosterone higher so arimidex works as an enzyme blocker it's not the same it doesn't work the same way as clomid it blocks the, the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. That's one of the ways it works. And estrogen is not good for men's fertility or men's testosterone because estrogen then comes back and binds up your testosterone. Whatever you make becomes inactivated. So am I understanding correctly? The Remedex interferes with the estrogen, not the testosterone. It, it interferes with the testosterone becoming estrogen. Okay. It stops that process. Because total testosterone... You just measure all that you produce. Mm -hmm. Some of that automatically gets converted into estrogen. Mm -hmm. D DHEA? No, no, estrogen. Estrogen. Estradiol and est est estrogen. So that just naturally me, estradiol happens. Estradiol and estrogen. That just naturally, naturally happens. happens. Automatically our body does that. If you get an imbalance and too much of your testosterone gets converted right. into estrogen, mm -hmm. then you develop those symptoms like gynecomastia, man mm -hmm. breast. Belly fat. Belly fat. Fatigue. fatigue tears. Insomnia. Tears. Yeah. All that stuff. Uh, so, so when that happens, you know, when we see that, we see it as men get older. We don't generally see it in young men, but I've been seeing it in young men where most of their testosterone is like dumped 
You're, it's not being used for what it should be used for. It's becoming something else. It becomes estrogen. So, so the total testosterone level drops, and then the estrogen is a double whammy. Goes back and ties up your test, your free testosterone. So, so we've explained this in our books, and we've explained it on multiple podcasts. But the concept of total testosterone: your body generates a given amount of testosterone that circulates through your blood system. It naturally attaches to receptor sites that call testosterone. Hey, come here. It goes yeah. to them. Mm -hmm. If it's not already attached to something, other things in your body will grab random testosterone molecules and attach to them, and then they're not free anymore. Yeah, they're protein. already bound to something else. Protein will, will, binds up 95% yeah. or more of your testosterone. Most of it's all bound up. Right. The, the part that's free... That, that is free of this protein is actually active in your body. And right. It can work. And is available to, for attachment right. to work for the reasons that it's meant. Right. And that's the free testosterone, which is why when you do hormone replacement, the critical question is, what is your level of free testosterone? Not total. Not total. But I like to know what total is initially to see if somebody's even making testosterone. If I right. just asked for the free on men, yeah. then I would, I'd be looking at, at at what they're using, which is, is a good number, it's probably the most important, how much is available for you to use, right. but the total testosterone for me says, oh yeah, he's still making it, but it's all bound up. So that's what I have to work on. It's that not means, usable. <laughs> it's not usable. So I have to stop that conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Okay. So so that's, so that's like what a remedy is. Anastrozole. Anastrozole is my favorite. There's two other drugs that I, I'm not going to go into, but there's two other similar drugs we uh -huh. use for breast cancer. They're permanent blockers. That means they get rid. They basically um, disable that system. So eh, maybe you need a little bit of estrogen as you get older for your brain and your bones. You don't want to wipe it out. We never right. want to get somebody to a zero estrogen. So I don't like to use the permanent ones. I like to use the ones that we can treat now, and we're not going to destroy the receptor sites. We're just so when you metabolize the one that you take, mm -hmm. then your body starts producing it again. The or it when starts being get, able to when you get rid of the uh, the aromas, uh, aroma, sorry, anastrozole. When we get rid of that and it's out of our system, then the men go back to making estrogen. Yes, out of their testosterone. But but if you take one of these other two, letrozole and Aromacin, they they permanently disable right. that the enzyme. Your ability to do that, and we we yeah. want to have some of that enzyme left because men do still need a little bit of estrogen. Right, else it wouldn't be sensitive. More about your brain not working and your bones not <laughs> oh, getting thick. Oh, so you I know, forgot. it's My brain part of that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so so that's why we use Arimidex, but it works in a second way for men, and that and also for women who are who have. Um, low FSH and LH and aren't cycling and we need them to get pregnant. So we give them a Rimidex so that it goes to your pituitary again and it stimulates more LH and FSH. So it works two ways. This is my favorite treatment. Yeah. It only The only time I can't really use it is in someone who doesn't have any estrogen. They don't have much estrogen. Right. But I still want to stimulate their pituitary. Right. So uh, I can still use it. I don't know. It doesn't always work as well when they're not I'm not fixing the estrogen problem. So, so there's, there's another drug. It's not so much for younger men, but right. as you get older, mm -hmm. men start to develop problems with their prostates. They get mm -hmm. enlarged prostates, and one of the side effects for the enlarged prostate is, is decreased urine flow. They have problems mm -hmm. with being able to urinate. And there is a medicine, rather than a surgical intervention, a medicine mm -hmm. called dutasteride, mm -hmm. which helps decrease the size of the prostate and increase the urine flow that men are able to achieve. Right. But we find it also impacts the testosterone balance. Right. That, it also it, stimulates the pituitary to make more LH and FSH. So for so younger men, it might be it's, a... It's like a happy side, happy side effect. It makes their testosterone higher, but it also makes their prostate smaller. The law of unintended consequences. Right. I mean, that's how we find a lot of different drugs. Viagra was supposed to be a drug for the heart, yeah. and it turns out to be a drug for ED. You know, that's every drug doesn't go into production with a with a use in mind that yeah. actually is what we, we end up with. Right. So this is one of the happy uh, consequences of dutasteride. It increases testosterone and free testosterone right. by stimulating the pituitary. Now, if you're an older man, your pituitary isn't the problem. Your, te your testicles are the problem. They aren't going to respond. They become resistant to LH and FSH. 
So you may have plenty of LH and FSH. I can't stimulate the production of testosterone in somebody like that with just a pill, one of these pills. Because the, the organ, the, the uh, testicles, don't receive or respond to the LH or FH anymore they when may you get, get older. it but it doesn't do anything yeah. lights are on but nobody's yeah on. so yeah. so you could have a great LH and FSH and when when your testicles are really resistant the LH and FSH surge I see on blood work LH and FSH are really high because they're beating the testicle to death to try to get it to work and it right. won't work right and so the low levels of testosterone are, are feeding back to the brain and saying make more so, so that linkage gets broken. Right. Yeah. It just doesn't work. So I can't give these drugs to people who are older. Yeah. I have to replace their testosterone, but they don't usually have a fertility issue either. Right, right. So the whole point of using these drugs in young men instead of just seems like it would be easier just to treat them with, a, uh, with testosterone, it would be. But we don't want to make them dependent on it for the rest of their lives. And we also... And take away their fertility take option. Take away their fertility because all of us are getting are older at the time of fertility now. But but it's also an important matter, something that in all the work that she has done, Dr. Maupin has really stressed, it's important to be an informed and educated consumer. Doctors shouldn't make decisions for you. They should make decisions with you. Mm -hmm. They should explain the information, give you the data, explain side effects, costs, all the elements that are involved. And then you get to participate in making the decision, do I try this treatment that costs this much and has these side effects? Do I try this treatment that costs this much and has these? What, what do I want? What's best for my life? So we provide this information to you so that you and your physician can make the best decisions for your unique individual circumstances. As always, thank you for listening. Stay healthy. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.